Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If y'all are new here, hi, my name is Kinsey. Nice to meet you. I'm in a really good mood because my favorite thing in the world to talk about is definitely books. Our books, our books. Really, that's not fitting my reading aesthetic vibe that I have going. My favorite thing to talk about would be reading. I'm a big reader. I grew up on Nancy Drew and Junie B. Jones. And then as I got older, I eventually, you know, transitioned into other things. I am all about the reading content. You guys want more reading videos, you let me know down below. In the past two years, I would say I've read at least 200 books. And I'm going to be showing you guys from my Goodreads the ones that I have rated five star. If y'all are trying to keep up with me, don't worry about following my Goodreads. Go follow my bookstagram. Thank you very much at ke book club and that is where y'all will stay up to date on my latest reads what i've been doing you get it okay i also am wearing a breadwinning housewife set linked below i do also want to say as i'm getting on goodreads that this is probably not the most fair video but it will be full of great book recs because i don't give out fives like i'm like i'm not doing it i'm very stingy with them other times I'm just throwing them out non-stop. So there are definitely books in which I would flip from a four to a five and a five to a four, okay? All right, now that we've established that. So this is like fair enough, okay? We're, it's as good as we're gonna get. I also wasn't using Goodreads correctly until like early 2021. So not every book that I've read in the past two years I've even rated, whatever. For the most part I have, okay? So Magnolia Parks Universe, we've got Magnolia Parks, We've got Daisy, which is number two, and then we have Magnolia Parks, The Long Way Home, which is number three. I don't know why, sometimes I forget these on roundups because they really are some of my favorite books in the entire world. Jess is also a very good friend of mine, so I think that's why I forget because I'm thinking like authors that I don't know personally. Fun fact, her episode was the first one on my podcast too that was like navigating your 20s, which is what ended up like really directing the podcast into the direction of navigating your 20s. The more you know, the more you know. Go listen, we also talk about writing. All three of these books, five stars, unbelievable. I would say this is like the London version of Gossip Girl, but much, much better. I love BJ. Like, if you listen to anything I say, read the Magnolia Parks universe. So good, also really unique, different. The covers are beautiful. Like, it's just so good. By the way, these are in no particular order than other than what's showing up in my Goodreads. Okay, I'll do a few nonfiction. Most of these are gonna be fiction. Attached, the new science of adult attachment and how you can find and keep love. This is all about attachment theory. It is so good and so helpful. When I learned about attachment theory, it like changed my life. And then when I read this book, it helped me so much. There's four different types of attachment and it is so good. I also read The Defining Decade, Why Your 20s Matter and How to Make the Most of Them and Now. I love this book. It changed my life. Certain parts of it, I understand why they're controversial. Not everyone loves it. I personally felt like it was a very helpful read. Loved. Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So I love Taylor Jenkins Reid's like early stuff too. So this follows the story of Elsie who falls in love very quickly with this boy named Ben. They meet on New Year's Day and by May they're married and then nine days later he dies tragically. At this point, the families don't even know they're married so she's at the hospital dealing with all that stuff. I loved this book. The Butcher by Jennifer Hillier, who is one of my favorite thriller authors. Now this is one of the books that I don't know why I picked it up other than I love Jennifer Hillier because it's so not, it's just not a book I would normally grab for. So this is about a serial killer by the name of the Beacon Hill Butcher. He was hunted down and killed by police, but now 30 seconds later, um, Shank, who is the like, I think he's like the sheriff, I think. Um, he's now retired and widowed and he's giving up his large house to his grandson, Matt, whom he raised. So Matt moves into this house. Matt's girlfriend has always had this theory that her mother was killed by the Beacon Hill Butcher. Matt makes a really weird discovery when he gets into this house. At this time, his girlfriend is having her own like Nancy Drew moment, if you will, figures things out. This goes into Matt's secret. It's really, really good. Even friends that like are normally not into this kind of realm of books that I recommended to really liked it. November 9, Colleen Hoover. I feel like a lot of us know about this book. So November 9 comes with a really crazy plot twist. It's about these two people who meet up every November 9th of every single year. It's a beautiful story. I really loved this one. If you're a Colleen Hoover fan, I really feel like everyone's a Colleen Hoover fan, would really recommend. Bright Side, this is a controversial 
kind of take. I loved the book. I feel like you either love this book or you hate it. This follows Kate who leaves San Diego to go to college in like Minnesota or something like that. She basically falls in love with this guy, Keller. That's pretty much all I'm gonna leave it at. I loved this book. Lots of twists, lots of turns, just so good. Before We Are Strangers, Renee Carlino, this is the book that made me realize that I actually do love romance novels. It's a missed connection. Basically, these two people meet on like NYU meetup day. They have this like fast connection, a lot's happening. Um, and then the guy ends up going away to do something. He's like an internship with National Geographic or something. He thinks he's gonna come back to the girl. The girl ends up being gone. A lot happens, you don't know. There ends up being twists and turns and whatever. So then 15 years later, he sees her. They, he issues like a missed connection thing. They reconnect and it goes on from there. Really, really, really good. Swear on this life, again, some of these books I haven't read in two years, so I'm trying to like summarize them and I'm forgetting, but trust me, they're good. So there's this debut author, Jay Colby, and everyone's talking about this book. Emmeline reads it reluctantly. She's a little bit bitter because this is like a young and new author. But from the very first page as she reads it, it's about this like crazy childhood. She realizes it's her childhood and Jay Colby has to be like her first love. So Jay Colby would be Jace, which is the best friend and first love that she hasn't seen in over a decade. She ends up like trying to hunt him down basically. Very good. Kind of heavy, but good. And of course it ends with us. I love this book. I haven't, I actually should probably go back and reread it before the next book comes because it was so good. Like, so, so good. And I read this in early 2020, so it's been a while, but like, I could tell you, I tell people to read this book every single day. Okay, so Lily graduates college, moves to Boston, and she starts her own business, and that's where she meets Ryle. She has this like no dating role, but she like meets Ryle, and he's a surgeon or something like that. What is he? Yeah, neurosurgeon. I was right. And basically, it just all kind of works out at that time and everything seems too good to be true. Ultimately, Lily kind of becomes the exception to his no dating rule. Well, I'm talking so much with my hands, guys. And then there's just some things in a new relationship that happen. Questions start to concern her. She starts thinking about Atlas, which is like really her first love. Atlas suddenly reappears and then it's suddenly everything that she built with Ryle is like threatened almost. This one is really crazy. Trigger warning, it's like some some bad things um, happening in this one, but it is very powerful. It's actually loosely based off of Colleen's mom. It is one of the best books I've ever read. I loved it so, so much. Okay, I rated Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris a five star, and like, I don't, I don't know. I haven't read it forever, so I mean, we're going with it. Basically, this couple seems like the perfect couple. They have the perfect marriage, um, but weirdly enough, the girl, Grace, she never answers the phone. She can never meet for coffee. She can never do all these things. She's cooking these elaborate meals, and then like, there's just like a lot of stuff that's really weird going on, and they're wondering like, what happens behind closed doors? I do remember liking it. I guess I rated it five stars. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Obviously, this is one of my favorite books in the entire world. So good, it follows like superstar, movie star, like icon, Evelyn Hugo, through her like seven husbands, her lifetime, um, under the guise of like writing this article. It's just like the best book ever. There's so many turns, there's so much to the book. I, I don't, it has a 4.47 rating too on Goodreads, which is really good. It is just the best book ever. One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So Emma marries her high school sweetheart, Jesse, and they build a life for themselves far away, right? On their first wedding anniversary, Jesse is on a helicopter over the Pacific and it goes missing. Just like that, Jesse is gone forever. At this point, they hadn't like found his body or anything, so they just assumed he was dead. They never like could obviously confirm that, but like he's in the middle of the ocean. Like he, you would think he was dead. So Emma eventually quits her job and she just moves back home to kind of get her life back together. Years later, now in her 30s, she runs into an old fan friend, Sam, and finds herself falling in love again. They get engaged, and then Jesse is found. So he's alive and he's been trying all these years to come back to her, but in that time, she's healed and grieved him and has like moved on into another relationship. So it just kind of goes through like picking like who her one true love is, and it is so good. I rated 101 essays that will change the way you think. Uh, five star as well. This is more of a nonfiction, just obviously 101 essays. Really good, it makes you think. The last is Parish. This is actually the first book that got me back on my fiction reading, not journey, but like kind of back on my like fiction reading in early 2020. So basically Amber is fed up. She wants like 
money basically she wants money power she wants a certain lifestyle and daphne is a socialite and philanthropist and she's basically everyone she's who everyone like wants to be in this small town in connecticut it's a very exclusive town and she has a real estate mogul husband jackson they're basically like straight out of a fairy tale so amber wants what daphne has she's so envious that she has this plan she basically like inserts herself into the family and then it goes on there is a twist so like what you think from me sharing that it sounds like it's very obvious and you know what's gonna happen but there are a twist i promise you like it is so good that's by Liv constantine which is actually an author duo um one day in december josie silver i read this book i think in a night i read a lot of these in a night and it was just such a sweet story Lori is pretty sure love at first sight doesn't exist anywhere but the movies but then through a bus window one snowy december day she sees a man and she knows instantly that he is the one um, and then her bus drives away, okay? This is actually kind of crazy. She is convinced that they are meant to be. So for the next year, she is like looking around at every bus stop that she's at for him. And she doesn't find him, right? But they end up reuniting at a Christmas party with her best friend who giddily introduces her new boyfriend, which shocking is the guy from the bus, Jake. So what follows for Lori, Sarah, and Jack is 10 years of friendship, heartbreak, missed opportunities, roads not taken, and destinies reconsidered. It's joyous, heartwarming, and immensely moving. It's just like a really beautiful, heartwarming story. Love, in other words, by Christina Lauren. I I sobbed at this book. I sobbed, I sobbed. A lot of people are comparing this one to Every Summer After. And I read this one like a year or two ago. So I would have never like connected the two. I understand the storylines being similar, but I get it, I get it. Macy is settling into an ambitious routine, work hard as a new pediatrics resident, plan her wedding to an older financially secure man, keep her head down and heart tucked away. But then she runs into Elliot, who is the first and only love of her life, in that bubble that she's crafted dissolves. So it's told in alternating timelines between then and now. It's teenage Elliot and Macy and then adult Elliot Macy. They're sharing a weekend and lazy summers together in a house outside of San Francisco, reading books, sharing favorite words, and talking through their growing pains and triumphs. And then as adults, they become strangers to one another until their chance of reunion. It's basically like love, loss, friendship. Very good book. I just remember crying. The Simple Wild series by K.A. Tucker. Oh my God, I loved these books. And again, I would have never picked them for myself. So I read all of them. There's four books technically in the series. Oh, I just saw that um, Colleen Hoover also rated it a five star. So it's The Simple Wild, Wild at Heart, Running Wild. And then there's also a novella, I want to say, in between that. There's four. I don't know where it is. So good. Kala and her mom, this is actually kind of weirdly giving a little bit of Twilight vibes. Stop. You'll see. Kala and her mom, when Kala was just a baby, flee Alaska. Um, her mother was in love with her dad and he just required them to live in Alaska and Kyla's mom was miserable so she ends up leaving him in their rural lifestyle and like it's very rural, like very, very rural, okay? Um, leaving behind the father, Ren, in the process. So then Kyla at 26 is living this busy life in Toronto and that's all she knows. Then she learns that her dad, Ren, is sick and she ends up going to spend time with him in Alaska. She meets this guy, Jonah, and it's this beautiful, beautiful story. And it's just, again, it's a beautiful story. 4.33 even on Goodreads, okay, guys? The whole series is so good. If you're looking to, like, dive into a series, it's amazing. And it takes place in Alaska, and I haven't really read a book, like, in the Alaskan wild ever, and it was so good. The Silent Patient, I loved. I read this early 2021 in a day. And it was so good. So Alicia Berenson's life is seemingly perfect. Famous painter married to an in-demand fashion photographer. She lives in this grand house overlooking one of overlooking a park in one of London's most desirable areas. One evening, her husband Gabriel returns home late from a fashion shoot, and Alicia shoots him five times in the face and then never speaks another word. Okay. She refuses to talk or give any kind of explanation. She turns a domestic tragedy into something far grander. This was a crazy, crazy twist, and it was just so good, like top thriller for me. Okay, Red, White, and Royal Blue, I loved this book. It's basically the first son, Alex Diaz, and then Prince Henry had this like confrontation at the royal wedding, all this stuff happens. Basically, it's a love story, hate to love story between them two, and it is juicy. I also like love anything that's presidential, but it's not just presidential, it's also the royal family. It is really good. Verity, Colleen Hoover again. I know so many of us feel the same way about this book. Lowen is a struggling writer on the brink of financial ruin when she accepts a job offer of a livestock time. So 
Jeremy Crawford is a husband of the best-selling author Verity Crawford and he's hired Lowen to complete her remaining books in successful series his injured wife is unable to finish. She arrives at the Crawford home and just like it is weird and Lowen doesn't expect to uncover in the chaotic office an unfinished biography or autobiography Verity had never intended for anyone to read. So page after page of bone chilling admissions, including Verity's recollection of what happened the day her daughter died. So Lowen's keeping this manuscript hidden from Jeremy, knowing that the contents would devastate the grieving father. But then Lowen's feelings for Jeremy intensify and she recognizes all the ways that it could benefit him. And then basically there's like a crazy twist at the very end. And that is still up to, up to interpretation. Like you have all those different theories. Very good. The Friend Zone series by Abby Jimenez. So these are three stories that are about heavier topics, but they're, it doesn't feel heavy when you're reading them. I will say I think the covers and the titles don't do these books any sort of justice at all. I read, I rated all of them five stars and it's not a direct series. It's one where she like picks a side character from the book and then expands on their story and another side character from the book and expands on their story. And it's just like, some of my favorite books ever. I love this series. Um, and each follows like a different like love story basically, but so good. Beach Read, Emily Henry, I fucking love Beach Read. It's a romance writer who no longer believes in love and a literary writer stuck in a rut in a summer long challenge that might just upend everything they believe about happily ever afters. I remember when I read this feeling like the cover and the title didn't do this book justice at all. I felt like it was a lot more than just what was like advertised almost. I love Beach Read. I don't, I didn't love a lot of the other books, but I love Beach Read. Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. I love this book because it, it honestly like makes me rethink a lot of things. It follows a troubled young mother that's yearning for a shot of redemption after this very heartbreaking mistake that she makes and she ends up losing custody of her daughter and then she's getting back um, and then there's like obviously a love story with it and it is so good and it's made me like question a lot of things in my life. Like I'm always like, I don't know how I feel about that. Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier. This is my favorite thriller book ever. It is so unique. Most thrillers, the husband kills the wife, right? This thriller, none of that happens. Very different. And also a twist that I never, ever saw coming. Marin had the perfect life. Married to her college sweetheart. She owns a chain of upscale hair salons and Derek runs his own company. They're admired in their community and are a loving family until the word falls apart the day their son Sebastian is taken. And a year later, Marin is a shadow of herself. FBI has gone cold and she hires a PI where the police left off, her and her husband barely speak, and it's just so good, like so good. Also, Jennifer Hillier always writes in the Pacific Northwest, which I really appreciate, because it's like different than like, I feel like so many books are like Murray Hill, you know? Open book, Jessica Simpson, Jessica Simpson's memoir. No, I don't need to explain any of that, but like unbelievable memoir, just might be the best memoir ever. Pack Up the Moon, Kristen Higgins. So this is the Kristen Higgins book that I sobbed at. Every month, a letter, that's what Lauren decides to leave her husband when she finds out she's dying. Each month, she gives Josh a letter containing a task to help him face the first year without her, leading him on a heart-rending, beautiful, often humorous journey to find happiness again in the new novel from New York Times bestselling author, Kristen Higgins. This book made me sob. It is so good. If you wanna just cry and read a beautiful, beautiful story, that's the one for you. The last thing he told me, I like this book because there was two locations that I connected to, one being Texas, the other being the Pacific Design Center, which is where my, the studio of Dear Media is in LA. It's a racist book club pick. Before Owen Michaels disappears, he manages to smuggle a note to his beloved wife of one year protect her. Despite her confusion and fear, Hannah Halls knows who she's referring to, which is Owen's 16 year old daughter, Bailey, who lost her mother tragically as a child. Bailey wants nothing to do with her new step stepmother. Hannah's increasingly desperate calls to Owen continue to go unanswered as the FBI arrests Owen's boss um, for like weird stuff and Hannah quickly realizes her husband isn't who he says he was. I loved this book. It got me out of a reading rut and I thought it was so good. It happened one summer, Tessa Bailey. This is like the most porny book there's ever been, I think, but it's really good. It follows Piper, who is basically this like, kind of like uptight, stuck up LA girl, who then goes, where did she go? She gets cut off after just like doing stupid things. And then he's the stepfather, who's the rich one, sends Piper and her sister to learn some responsibility. Basically, they're running their late father's dive bar in Washington. They don't fit in, she meets this guy, he's making fun of her, kind of like a, they hate each other and love each other kind of thing. 
Really good book. Everyone loves this one. Part of Your World, Abby Jimenez. Again, I've rated every book that she's ever read. All four are written. Every book that she's ever written, I think I've, I've rated a five star. Alexis Montgomery's had her world turned upside down. Her ultra wealthy parents are like high up in this hospital and they have a very clear vision for what they want her life to be. She was engaged and then that just went really, really south. And then she meets this guy, Daniel, who's 10 years younger than her, a carpenter, totally different life. And he, basically his hometown, like all relies on him, they live like two hours away, and the story continues on. Basically bringing Daniel into a world is impossible, but it just ends up being a really beautiful book. I'm saying that about everything, I'm sorry guys. Every Summer After, Carly Fortune, again, um, a story of these kids who grew up with their summer houses next to each other. It's similar to the one I was sharing earlier. This one's really hot currently, but it does like a then and now take the twist of like why things went south or why did they never rekindled. Didn't see that coming, um, really good. Run Rose Run by Dolly Parton. This book takes place in Nashville, which is why I loved it. And I love Dolly Parton and I love everything about it. So it's a thriller about a young singer songwriter on the rise and on the run and determined to do whatever it takes. I loved it. I just read Jeanette McCurdy's memoir, I'm Glad My Mom Died. So good. Like if you are into celebrity memoirs, this is like one of the best. Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. Obsessed, obsessed. I love this book, it's long, but I loved it. Naomi, it wasn't just running away from her wedding, she was riding to the rescue of her estranged twin to Virginia, and this twin is like an evil twin. She hasn't changed at all, and she finds out she has a niece, Naomi. She's 11, and basically, since her mom's left, she has to take care of her and do all the stuff, and um, she meets Knox, who doesn't like complications, or high maintenance women, and I mean, you can guess where it goes from there. Really good. Ugly Love, Colleen Hoover. When Tate Collins meets airline pilot Miles Archer, she knows it isn't love at first sight. They wouldn't even go as far to consider themselves friends. The only thing Tate and Miles have in common is an undeniable mutual attraction. Once their desires are out in the open, they realize that they have the perfect setup. He doesn't want love. She doesn't have time for love, so that just leaves a sex. Their arrangement couldn't be more surprisingly seamless as long as Tate can stick to The only two rules Miles has for her, don't ask for the fact and don't expect the future. Very like, classic but it's a really good book and that is it for books that i have rated five stars i'm sure some of my ratings are off and some of my four should be five five should be four whatever you know this is a good this is a good start i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys want book reviews or book content or anything like that let me know down below what you want to see and also i already post a ton on my instagram i have a whole bookstagram ke book club and then um on my actual instagram kenzie elizabeth i do a lot of book roundups so i love you guys so much i hope you guys enjoyed and i will talk to you guys soon bye so i started to write you know and i'm also i also have done the artist way have you heard of this mm -hmm. with julia cameron in a in a, in a uh a piece of that is also morning writing, morning journaling. 